Hello, welcome. We've got a sequence of videos here that are meant to help you understand specifically the tangent function. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is focus on the construction of this model that helps us visualize the tangent function. It also has the cotangent, cosecant, and secant, and sine and cosine functions, but we are specifically going to focus on the tangent function to make sense of the graph of the tangent. The graph of the tangent is represented by these curves here and here. And I also graph these asymptotes, which the tangent approaches but never reaches. And when we see this tangent graph, it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but our goal is to, through these videos, develop your intuition around this graph. By the end of this series of videos, you should have a model that you can work with to picture why this makes sense. So the first thing we're going to do here is construct this model, because I think it's incredibly helpful. So let's do that. Okay, so the first thing we should do is grab a ruler and some graph paper. Blank paper is fine as well, and also something to draw a circle. So why don't you pause the video and go get your supplies. So at this point, I'm assuming you have your supplies, you're ready to draw a y and an x-axis and a unit circle. So I'm going to do that right now, we can do that together. I'm going to get my line tool, you get your ruler, and let's draw a y-axis, an x-axis, and a unit circle. There's my y-axis, there's my x-axis, and now I'm going to get my circle tool. There it is. I'm going to use gray so it kind of imitates the color of pencil for you. There's my circle. So pause the video if you need to, but make sure you now have a unit circle, a y and x-axis, and let's also draw a terminal line for the angle pi over 4 radians. Let's get pi over 4 radians, which is 45 degrees, onto that circle. Okay, so I'd say it's about, for me, I think about there. That looks pretty good. Halfway between, if you have a compass, um, you can do that. I'm just gonna actually move this a little bit this way. I think that's, a, that's better. Okay. So, first things first, let's label our angle. Let's say this is theta. I don't like that pen width right there. We can do better. All right, there's theta. This is some point, x, y. Let's drop a perpendicular. Okay, let's drop a perpendicular down and label the right angle and then label our sides. And you might go ahead and do that. Um, the hypotenuse, we have a unit circle, so how long is that? Well, it's 1. Okay, we got that. Um, it turns out that this right here, when you're dealing with a unit circle, is equal to the sine of theta, and I'll re-explain that in a moment. And this side down here is the cosine of theta. What's going on here? Well, remember that for theta, the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So this is some y, this y value here and we don't know what it is, some height to get to this point, over 1. So the sine of theta equals y over 1, but since it's over 1, it turns out that y is just equal to the sine of theta. So this y value is the sine of theta, and the cosine of theta is x over 1, or just x. So cosine of theta is the x value, and sine of theta is the y value. And we're calling it x and y because we're getting to this point up here, x, y. So that's some of the background. We've, we've been covering that. Now we have the basics. But here's the trick. We have got to represent tangent. That's our primary goal here. And we want to draw a picture for that. Now let's think for a moment that tangent of theta in right triangle trigonometry is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, it would be y over x, which means it would also be sine of theta, right? It was y is sine of, of theta over x, cosine of theta. How do we draw that, though? Where is that? Now, before we draw it, remember there are several ways to do this, and also remember that you don't have to go any further. It's possible that since tangent is simply the ratio of sine to cosine, you can picture what that would mean as theta is changing. It's just the, the quotient of these two sides, the ratio. Now if you do that, you do get this graph here of tangent, but we, for me at least, it's a little difficult to picture what tangent is equaling as a ratio of these two sides. It'd be really nice to have a picture, a line, or something that represents tangent, and we can do that. And one of the key elements, the reason I chose pi over 4 radians, if you remember, the, the sine and cosine 
for pi over 4 radians are equivalent. And you can quickly prove that. Let's just go down here and do this. So let's assume that um, theta, if theta equals pi over 4 radians, then what you essentially have is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? This is pi over 4. Pi over 4, it's 45, 45, 90. So using the Pythagorean theorem, if the hypotenuse is 1, these two sides are radical 2 over 2. All right, so this is the sine of theta. The y value is the sine of theta. This is the cosine of theta. And the tangent is those two things divided. Well, they're equal things, right? Radical 2 over 2 divided by itself. Tangent is therefore just 1. And that's why we're choosing this as a starting point. For our model, theta can change. And sine, cosine, tangent, they'll all change with it. But right here, tangent is 1. And since our unit circle, think about this from our unit circle has a radius of 1, there must be some way to tie all of this together. And we're going to do that. So we're going to tie together the fact that this radius is 1 and the tangent is 1 to get our model going. So what I encourage you to do is take your ruler, try to extend this triangle, and drop the perpendicular, so you get a triangle like this. Now you know your model is correct if, if, if you draw the angle correct, if you also draw this line over and it basically hits the vertex of what you just drew. Because it should be uh, halfway between, you should be able to get essentially a square, of course. So make sure you've got that, and if you don't, pause the video and redraw it, because you'll want to do that. you want to have a solid model here. All right, so I'm going to just label my right angle, and now things get interesting. Well, what do we know? We know that this side down here is the length, this is the radius, it's 1. Okay, we also know that, um, well, we know that there are two, there's a leg here and a hypotenuse. So, what can we say about this? Well, it's time for dun, 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 similar triangles. So, let's look at similar triangles here. What I'm going to first do is redraw the smaller similar triangle. Here it is. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. It's a little sloppy, not the same, not perfect, but that's our smaller triangle, and I'll leave it right there. And then the larger triangle, okay, and you should draw both of these separately, just like this, so you can see the similarity. Oops, I want to have green. We got a color code. All right, so here is the larger triangle, and something amazing is about to happen, in my humble opinion. All right, these are the two triangles. Instead of being on top of each other where it's hard to see, we'll draw them here. Now look at this, this is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mathematics. All right, we have two right triangles, right? They're both right triangles. And for speeds, well, I'll use color coding. Um, here, in the smaller triangle, we said this is the sine of theta, and this is the cosine of theta. And I'm gonna put both of them inside the triangle so it looks a little bit neater. And over here, we've got, what do we have? We have one. And that's not the right green, come on, Sean. There we go. This is 1. So what is this? What is this length over here? Mystery length. Well, the these are similar triangles. So the ratio of the mystery length to 1 has to equal what? The, the, the sine to the cosine. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, something over 1, and let's just get rid of the 1. It's over 1. It's irrelevant. What is equal to sine over cosine? Oh, yeah tangent. Isn't that cool? This, everyone, is the tangent. That's right. This line represents the tangent of theta. And that is a remarkable step. Because now what we have, amazingly, is a picture of the tangent, right? This line is the tangent of theta. Let's go here and let's label it. Why is that helpful? Well, as theta changes, you can try and imagine what's going to happen to the length of this side of the triangle, and that will get you the graph of the tangent, and we will get there soon, but bear with me. All right, this is the first video. I hope this helped.